You are watching the New American Media. It's Friday, and you know what that means. It's time for the Unhappy Hour live sports radio show on the New American Media.com. Here is your host, Brian Engelman. Hey, everybody. Hello and howdy. Thank you very much for sticking around with us. Welcome to the Unhappy Hour. We'll expand a little bit away from our Strictly Browns segment because we're going to get into Art Modell and the legacy he left and the pain that he caused and how we can learn to forgive or at least deal with very unpleasant emotions. Yeah, maybe there was a unpleasant relationship issue in your life. Maybe you suffered at the hands of violence. Maybe you were in a... In a it, it, just a very unhealthy situation. What do we carry anger around on? Maybe something bad happened to your... to... people of your ethnic descent. Or people from your state. Or people from your country. Or people from where your grandparents came from. Maybe we carry around these things all day. I'm not sure. But for us as Cleveland sports fans, and maybe just fans of the Cleveland Browns, or maybe fans of the underdog, or maybe fans of the little guy, or maybe fans from mid-market teams. Are you listening, Kansas City, Minnesota, Jacksonville? Come on, pick some more mid-market teams. I don't know what to say about Pittsburgh. doesn't have a basketball team, so it's not a city that has three. The Pirates have been consistently disappointing, but the Steelers have been good. I don't know. I, I really don't know how to describe that. But really, how about fans of the underdog? Remember after Hurricane Katrina, how, how bad that was, and, and, and it got so much worse than a lot of people anticipated? I mean, a lot of people said, yeah, I got it. I'll figure this out. I'll be okay. And it just overtook them. You cannot mess with Mother Nature. She's way older, way stronger, way smarter than you. Don't mess with her. You know, and we had two earthquakes yesterday out here in Los Angeles, by the way, um, or, or at least two in the past two weeks, um, centered in Beverly Hills. We, the, the whole building shook here in Los Angeles at midnight. 3.5. Uh, one of my friends has family down in Costa Rica. Their house was destroyed. The family's safe. But what happens if you wake up and your house is gone? I mean, <laughs> think about the damage. Think about how that hurts. It, it hurts, you know? It really, it really takes a part of you and, and forces you into survival mode. And while in survival mode, you can feel weird. And when anger just kind of feeds itself and, and, and people rile other people up about it, it can turn into something really unhealthy. And you, you look at the city of Cleveland. Look at, look at Cleveland for a minute. I mean, the Cleveland Indians took a Game 7 ninth inning lead into the World Series and blew it. That had never been done before. If you're that close, you seal the deal. We choked, gave it up, gave it away. Close, but no cigar. The Cavs, year after year, best team in the league, back-to-back -back years, MVP in the league, back-to-back -back years, coach of the year, executive of the year. And regardless of the revisionist history that, that want to keep saying, well, you didn't give him Chris Bosh. Well, you didn't give him Dwayne Wade. Well, he's the king. He's the reigning MVP. He needs to find a way to get the talent around him. Come on. Oh, we need to just go to a big market. Right, Miami. The biggest market on the planet, Miami. Well, they had no support over there. Well, come on. Of course he did. Of course he had support over there. But either way, you know, you have a team that's, that's really good in the regular season and then chokes in the postseason, and then your star leaves you. In the 80s... I mean, what, what do you have in the 80s? You have, you have John Elway making his career against the Cleveland Browns. I mean, Bernie Kosar could be viewed a totally different way today, had a few different things happen. I mean, the Browns in the 80s were, were multiple years were teams that were destined to be headed to the Super Bowl. I mean, the Browns haven't even played in a Super Bowl. It was two years before the Super Bowl even started that the Browns' last championship occurred in 1964. But we helped start the league. Go back and look at NFL championships with Otto Graham. Look up Otto Graham. That guy was... He's in the Hall of Fame. 
what was it? The, the uh, eight out of eleven championships, and j- just take a look at the stats. They're astonishing. I don't have them in front of me right now. I could pull them up, but I don't feel like talking about autogram right now. What I want to talk about is Art Modell and how we're supposed to feel. Yeah, how how should we feel right now? I don't know. How do you feel? Leave your comments if you if you, if you're watching this after the fact on YouTube. Leave your comments below. And we'll read, we'll respond, keep them mostly civil. But but what are your thoughts on Art Modell? You know, he died, so he's gone. I mean, what about that question? Do the Browns owe Art Modell a tribute of any kind? Man, I'm saying stay away from that. <clears throat> I'm not proud of how I felt or my initial reaction when I found out that Art Modell had passed. I was really hurt by that move. Really hurt. You know, come on, any sports fan, take away their favorite team. Take away the Cowboys. Take away the Yankees. Take away the Lakers. Take away any team. Whoever, Who's your favorite team in basketball? Think of your favorite team in basketball. Now take them away and move them across the country. And you got to watch them win a championship elsewhere in a few years. Oh, don't worry. We'll give you a team back, but they're going to suck for a decade and a half. Come on, how are you going to feel? That's who did this. Art Modell did that to Cleveland. Think of your favorite football team. Take them away. Move them a few thousand miles away. Make sure you watch them win a Super Bowl a few years later. But don't worry, you'll get your favorite NFL team back. They're just going to suck for a decade and a half. How do you feel about the guy that moved your team away? Think of your favorite baseball team. Move them down the road. Put a different logo on them. Watch them win a World Series. Don't worry, you'll get your Major League Baseball team back. They're just going to suck for a decade and a half. How do you feel about the owner that did that to you? So for anyone out there bashing Cleveland, shut up. Seriously, enough of it. Enough. You have no idea what you're talking about. You don't know how it feels if you're not from Cleveland. You don't get it. And I'm not saying... Now let, let's, let's start harping on Art Modell and let's start making jokes about him and let's start rubbing it in. Let's start being really crass. Yeah, there's a secret part of me that reads those tweets and enjoys them because part of me wants to say some really bad things because I've never forgiven him. How, how, do, how, do you, how do you forgive the guy that stole your favorite team? Well, it's his team. He had the right to move it. Fine. He has the right to do what he wants with his franchise and I have the right to feel how I feel. So, so what do you, what do we do with that? You know, what are we supposed to do with that? I mean, I, I. So you know, sometimes you don't really realize how you feel until you get into the situation. And I can say that about LeBron James. When LeBron James won his his championship, and please don't don't let me leave this to be an ambiguous statement. I rooted against him every single step of the way. I'm not happy with how he treated Cleveland. I, I don't I don't appreciate how he treated my my favorite team growing up. I played intramural basketball. Our team won a championship actually. <clears throat> An intramural championship. Now I was a bench player that put some minutes in on that team. I kind of coached it, kind of ran it, but I put a bunch of really good people together, and together we won a championship. I mean, I wasn't the main component by any means. I was usually the least talented player on the court, but I loved basketball. You know, and LeBron James, when he did that, I how do you forgive that? I don't know. It's like, come on, let's make it work here. Is this so bad? Is this an abusive relationship where you got to escape us because we're treating you wrong? I don't know that that's the case. And if that's not the case, you're a selfish punk, and I don't forgive you, and I don't wish you well. And I think it's weak sauce. Yeah, I said weak sauce. I'll take it back though, because it's stupid. Yeah, but I think it was weak. I think it. Was, I think it was very weak to bail without bringing a championship home. To know how important it is, how close the Cavs, Indians, and Browns have been over the past 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, 48 years now, since the championship in '64 that Art Modell got us. So I'm thankful for that. Although I wasn't even close to being alive. But that's my history. That's baggage I'm bringing with me that has nothing to do with me. 
I have German descent. I have Russian descent. There were bad German people. There were good German people. There were bad Russian people. There were good Russian people. How much of that am I bringing forward through my parents, through my grandparents, through shared experiences, through DNA? I don't know. I don't know. How much of that stuff do we carry around? That doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, all that matters is I will sincerely... <coughs> Excuse me there. I do have a mute button. I should just use my mute button. Yeah, now, now I'm showing you how the sausage is made. Here, I have a mute button, so I'm going to cough. Ready? Didn't hear that, did you? But you did hear a little clickety-click. So, what, what do we do with this? What, what do we do with these feelings? You know, what, are you, what are you supposed to do? Are you supposed to root for giving up? Are you supposed to root for that? Or do you root for the New Orleans Saints, for example? What about the New Orleans Saints? Do you root for them as the underdog? Don't we, don't we usually root for the underdog in America, in Cleveland sports? Do, do, in American sports? In Amer I mean, don't you usually root for the underdog? Wouldn't it be nicer to see, I don't know, insert not so previously successful team here. How about Washington Nationals? How about that? They don't have much of a history of success. I mean, in their latest incarnation, at least, you know? After Hurricane Katrina, there was a catastrophe. People were beat up. We were still kind of spinning around after 9-11. Yeah, why wouldn't you root for the Saints? It was a good story. So here's what I'm going to root for. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to do a whole segment on that. I, that's a little teaser. Because I'm going to propose who you should root for. And why. Okay? So... We'll get to that in a second. But I think Cleveland makes a great underdog story. I think the Saints made a great underdog story. And I think what Art Modell did was was just horrible. Now, you can read a lot of in-depth stuff, as I've been doing, and I recommend if you haven't, go on uh, cleveland.com or plaindealer.com. Click through, get to sports. A lot of good insight you're going to find on that page. I'm, in, I'm doing my own thing, but there you'll find a little bit of different information. But it, it really rounds out the experience of what Art Modell did. For the record, I had a Go to Hell Model t-shirt. I bought it. I was at that last game in Municipal Stadium. I was there. I lived through it. I was angry about it. I'm still not happy about it. Not not even close. Now, I, I, I talked... <laughs> Shannon Sharp said on Twitter yesterday, he sent out a very sad day in Baltimore with the passing of former team owner Art Model. Art was loyal, honest, and cared for his players and employees. The New American Media replied, As Cleveland Browns fans, we simply cannot and never will agree with your statement that Art Modell was loyal. There you go. That, that's not... I, I'm, I'm feeling frustration. I'm still feeling anger. I'm still feeling... All of those negative emotions, the negative connotation. I mean, think back to when something bad happened to you. Do you remember that as a positive thing or something that, that, that makes you cringe to this day? I'm still cringing thinking about it. I mean, I went to the last game. I didn't know if the Browns would ever come back. I got the seat from in front of me. You know, this really affected us. It, it, like Brandon was saying in the previous segment, it was very interesting because it, it, it Brunswick High School in the, in the 1996 high school football season, I mean, there were no Cleveland Browns. And so the, sta the stands, the stadiums that we played were electric because people couldn't get their professional football anywhere, so they supported their local team. It was intense. I mean, I remember Jim Tomey was in the, in the stands for a home game. He had to leave at halftime. He was getting swarmed. This was during the, the really good run of the Indians, 95, 96, 97, et cetera. But it was a lot. It, it really hurt. It really hurt when Art Modell ripped the hearts out of millions of Cleveland Browns fans. It hurt. I, I don't celebrate that at all. My, my, sincerely, my thoughts and prayers go out to the family. You know, there, there are people attached. They didn't, I don't know. It, it, at this at this point, you know, you just recognize friends and family, and 
some people that he had not wronged yet. You know, some people that he had not wronged. <clears throat> you know, because a human being died. That That is important. At the end of the day, is a football team really important? I don't know. Did it mean something when New Orleans won? Did it mean something for their ego, their their their, their morale? Did it lift their spirits a little bit after so many so many negative things to happen? Did it help New Orleans? D- did it help the country who had just been kind of sleepwalking through an attack where 3,000 people are killed in, in, in Manhattan? Did that feel good? Did the country have a general happy, sunny, rainbow-filled glow about it with care carefree times? Or did it seem like a little bit of a storm cloud had been flying over the country, just looming and lurching through, putting its taint, its stink, on everything it touched? I mean, I <clears throat> I watched last year the Cleveland Browns start the season against the Cincinnati Bengals, and the Browns lost. And in between the games, I, th- I think it was the New York Jets playing the second game, and I was watching it at a local establishment. This was back in Ohio, but, you know, some, some, some place in Ohio uh, with, with locals that were watching. <clears throat> and they did a tribute uh, to, to September 11th, you know, 10-year anniversary. And I, and I started crying. I'm in the middle of a bar. You know, I've been sitting in a bar for a couple hours, eating wings and having potato wedges and eating food mixed with a beverage or two. And, and it all just kind of came flooding back. All of those emotions, all of, all of the 9-11 frustration, being sucked into war and conflict and the Patriot Act, stealing your civil liberties and reading every one of your emails and following the GPS on your phone and reading who you're in your contacts list and eavesdropping on conversations. Thank you, 9-11. Yeah, that, all of that Fourth Amendment violating crap came in after or because of 9-11. It's just gotten worse over the past decade. And I weep at our future if we don't get a grip on the Fourth Amendment and the fact that nobody has a right to spy on your personal data. And the fact that we can have these conversations all the time, it, it, it reminds me how important that we keep the ability to have open conversations on the internet and that we can't agree to disagree. That's the name of one of our programs here. And sometimes we just blur them together. So, you know, sometimes you start off on the unhappy hour and it ends up into something a little deeper, a little bit more esoteric, a little more philosophical, a little bit more political, a little bit more financial, whatever. Because if I'm talking to my buddies, th- these are the conversations that intrigue me, that interest me. And this is the conversations I hope intrigue you. Because while we do waste a lot of time with fantasy football leagues and we do root for teams and cry when they lose... I mean, I, I cried last year as they did that tribute. I think it was the, during the Jets game after the Browns game. Um, I realized I never got over it. You know, I've never fully grieved for 9-11 and what happened to our country. The Patriot Act is so vile and disgusting. You now there are people out there that say that that, that that happened on purpose, that somebody, no, I don't mean George Bush did something, stop it. But there, that... There was a conversation and things were planned and part of it was to just get these emergency maneuvers so that we could all be spied on. Well, talk about the bad guys. If you can, if you can believe half the Hollywood stories that you hear, and by the way, we broadcast from Hollywood. We can see the Hollywood sign from the office studio. Office studio window, but... You know, why do we have the Patriot Act? Why did that happen? Why did President Obama campaign and say, hey, you know, let's let's repeal that? And then he gets in office and then he resigns it. Okay, well, regarding the most important issues of the day, you're just like the other guy. And then he passes the National Defense Authorization Act on New Year's Eve that says American citizens can be kidnapped, detained, charged, and held indefinitely. No, they, they can be held indefinitely, put it that way. Held indefinitely without charges and without a due process and a trial. There's nothing more Ameri- uh, more un-American than that. There's nothing more illegal than that. And that's what President Obama put in. So for all this hope and change, you're getting the same Bush overreach. You're, you're still getting 
the 1984 hairs standing up on the back of your neck. So sometimes we talk about sports and sometimes we extrapolate on it. But, I mean, they had a 9-11 tribute. And when I think about 9-11, I get sad because of where our country has, has gone over the past 10 years, over the past 30 years, after the, after the past 100 years. You know, some of the things that we've given up and done incorrectly, it's just, it's, it's sad. But that's what, what gets brought up emotionally when you, when you watch a tribute to 9-11, when you're trying to watch a football game. And it's what happens to me when I start thinking about Art Modell taking the Cleveland Browns away. It's all related. It's, it, it helps me shape my idea, my concept of politics. It helps me shape politics. And, and here's, some, here's something I want, I want to put out there. Do you think it's better for one guy to own a team that some may say emotionally belongs to everyone? Or do you like the Green Bay Packers model? Where the Green Bay Packers, the residents, are the shareholders. They're not going to vote to move their team away because they go watch their team play and they like it in their backyard. They collectively own it. So now, is this the 99% versus the 1%? What do you have here? 99 versus 1? Well, if Art Modell can take it and not care about all of us, then maybe we should all follow the Green Bay Packers model. And we all own it together. Have the Packers been successful? Well, they've been to Super Bowls, plural. They've won quite a few. Yes, I raise my hand for the collective, for the 99%. But wait. Wait for it. I am a strong capitalist. What does that mean? Oh, capitalism is bad. No, no, no. Crony capitalism is bad. When politicians rig the system and only pay their buddies and everyone gets screwed and millions of dollars are siphoned and funneled to buddies to finance more corrupt political campaigns so that they can break their own laws and impose more sanctions on you, losing our libertarian state so that they can remain in power, I'm against that stuff. But I think if you work a 10-hour day, you should make more money than an 8-hour day. I think that if you're failing because you're not working and you're not trying, then I think you need to go out there and you need to work and you need to try. And I do recognize that there is a safety net. There is a group of people. There is a small percentage of people that are handicapped, that are, are, are differently abled, that have different disabilities different birth defects, different diseases, different physical issues. There is a small portion of our country that just cannot really get up and move around and really cannot, they, they just really cannot make a way for their own. But yet, there's another group of people out there that have found a way to get by on the lowest rung of financial income. If you're climbing the rung of financial income, the lowest rung on the ladder, the very first step, when you take that first climb up on the ladder, the very first thing that you put your foot on, if you can just pay your bills, get some groceries, get by, and you don't have to do anything for it, well, I mean, come on, that's a fun way to live a little bit. Go back backpacking in Europe. You know, just power down, lose your responsibility for a little bit. The system owes me. Let, let me get this out of my system. I don't know. I think you got a problem with that. But I'm faced with a dilemma. I think that the city of Cleveland would have been better off had the, big, the biggest fans of the Cleveland Browns and the biggest financial contributors of the Browns could own their own team. I think that's a good thing. I don't know. So this is interesting. So do you have one owner of a company that can move it around, or do you have a group of shareholders that get to make the choice collectively, together? Man, this is getting complicated. This republic is very interesting. No, I, I, I hate the fact that Art Modell had the power to do that. So in, in the founding interests of, of the United States of America, it was for a very strong local government. You know, the, the shareholders of the Cleveland Browns or the Green Bay Packers are able to make the local decisions on your local team. And then federally, there's a loose guideline. You know, the NFL does, all right, here are the rules. We'll have a rules committee meeting once a year. Here's how we're going to officiate the games. Here's what's going on. Da, 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 da. That's fine. 
But now it's backward. Now you have Roger Goodell with an iron fist, you know, at the NFL commissioner's office just dictating. It will be this way because I have decreed as such. Well, why would you get that? Well, it's in your latest collective bargaining agreement. Well, that was done. I don't know. I don't like how that was done. Too bad. People are saying that about our government right now. Well, I don't like the National Defense Authorization Act. Well, the Patriot Act is still illegal. Why are these things happening? What is going on here? I oppose this. Well, your elected leaders in the past approved it. Well, I don't think they did the correct job, and I, th I think we need to retroactively stop this stuff. So, so where, do, where do we believe? This, this leads me to an interesting crossroads, because I like the story that someone like Art Modell was able to become an owner of a team. You know, I, I, I would love to be the owner of an NFL team. I, 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 I will state for the record, let it be said, I would love to be the owner of the Cleveland Browns. Okay? I think that'd be fantastic. So, Jimmy Haslam, if you're looking for a number two. Wait, how did I make that noise? I, don't, I just don't want to burst your eardrums with it. I'm your man. I think that'd be sweet to own the Cleveland Browns. You know, so I like thinking that we can, we too can create something. And then if, if we are able to build up something successful where we can become the owner of the, the team, well, we wouldn't want to give that away. I wouldn't want to give that away if I became the owner. So there's my motivation. If I want to do it, I got to make it happen. But when you put all the power into one person's hands, they can just make a decision you don't like. And that's what Art Modell did to us. And now, we have a day where I'm communicating with Hall of Fame NFL player Shannon Sharp, who tweets, A very sad day in Baltimore with the passing of former team owner Art Modell. Art was loyal, honest, and cared for his players and employees. Now, I could see how he may have been... Okay, now I don't know about the word honest. Let me move on. Okay, I could see how he cared for his players. Okay. Those were reports in Cleveland that he did care. I, I get that. I've, I've heard that. I, I'm okay with understanding that. That he cared for his players and employees. All right. And, and I agree that it was a sad day in Baltimore. And I agree that Art Modell passed. But with honest and loyal, my reply to Shannon Sharp was, as Cleveland Browns fans, we simply cannot and never will agree that yours, with your statement that Art Modell was loyal. As Cleveland Browns fans, we simply cannot and never will agree with your statement that Art Modell was loyal. And, and that's, that's, he replied saying, I'm not going to try to convince you, but, but, but trust me, he was great. You know, we continued our conversation a little bit. <laughs> By the way, don't you love Twitter? Where, where else are you going to have a conversation with Roseanne Barr and Shannon Sharp in the same day? Fr from, the, from, the, from the comfort of your couch prior to an earthquake. It's such a strange world that we live in. But that's why we do this stuff here at the New American Media. Because we just, we just, we like communicating with you guys. It's not always about sports. Sometimes it's about life and death. And really, thoughts and prayers go out to the friends and family. Um, but I'm not over it, you know. And, and don't tell me how I'm supposed to feel. You know, don't, don't tell me. That, I don't know, that I'm supposed to just get over it. And I'm not talking about Brandon specifically. I know he said he personally did and... And it's good. But I didn't know how bad it was going to feel when LeBron James won his first championship in Miami after getting so close with the Cavs and giving up. I mean, LeBron did change his style in the playoffs. He was, he was very loose. He was upbeat. He was fun. He was energetic. And then when the playoffs came, he, he changed as a leader, and that changed the chemistry of the team. And then he was able to blame the team. And some people say that the team... It was their fault, or it was the GM's fault, or it was the coach's fault. But really, LeBron became a leader. He became the champion th that we all expected him to be in Cleveland. He just never got that final – he never figured out that final step. We kept waiting for him to do it with us, but he, he, he didn't possess it at the time. You know, he had to grow through that. Maybe it was a year of, of – the year of vitriol that he soaked up that, that gave him that extra thing inside that, that, that was not there in the previous years that led to missed opportunities and no championships. But I didn't know how it was going to feel watching LeBron win a championship. And, you know, I was very angry 
very upset when the Miami Heat won. But it was only for a second. It really did not last long. I mean, I, I've I've had two almost you know two full years of. I mean, it it stinks. You know, it's like trying to not drive past your girlfriend's house if she lives on your way home from work. I'm a sports fan. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep hearing about LeBron James. I'm gonna keep watching the Miami Heat. I'm gonna watch the Cavs stink. Great. I gotta drive past my ex girlfriend's house on the way home from work. That's where she's at. Oh, we'll take another road. There are no other roads. It's a freeway, and it's a big building. I can see it right there. It's perched at the top of a hill. It's even illuminated at night with pink, pink evil. I mean, but you see what I'm saying. As a sports fan, you're rooting for your team, and you got to watch the other. It's just, oh, let it go. Let it go. He made a choice. I know he has a right to make his choice, and I have the right to have my opinion. I'm very let down. You know? I, I always saw that this was the best player in the NBA. I saw that he was growing into becoming a man and growing into becoming his own and making the whole city of Cleveland and the whole state of Ohio and all of those underdogs proud. Instead, he gave up. He joined the dark side, and he, and he got his precious trophy. Fantastic. Good for you. Good for you. Now, here's your lesson, kids. When the going gets tough, go. Give up. Quit. Well, Art Modell had financial problems, and you wouldn't give him a new stadium. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. There is no reason it had to resort to that. There is no reason it had to play out the way that it played out. He ended up selling the shares in the team anyway. Never a really good businessman. So sometimes he was, sometimes he wasn't. But I didn't know how I was, I was going to feel with LeBron James. And you know how it felt? I'll tell you it felt like this. I'll tell you that... I felt relieved that it was over I, I did I felt I felt relieved I, I, I felt like I could let go of some of the anger now I mean I, I could physically feel it you know to, to, to really move on and have another chapter maybe that new chapter starts with the Browns winning and going to the playoffs maybe it starts with going to the Super Bowl Or, you know, you know, what if, what if, what if that's what it could be? Let's what, let's ponder that for just a second. I don't know. I didn't really feel different when Art Modell died. I'll tell you what. I had an initial venomous reaction when I heard the news, when I saw his picture on TV. I've had a, I've had a reaction to that picture on TV for, what, fifteen years now, seventeen years more than half of my life. I've had that reaction. Every time I see his name, my fists clench and you dirty. That's the reaction I've had for a long time. And I guess in a way some of that did give way. Maybe. A little bit. You know, sending thoughts and prayers to his loved ones and family. It doesn't mean I have to like the guy. It doesn't mean I have to forgive him. I should forgive him. Maya Angelou with Dave Chappelle, I tell this all the time. Uh, th there's a series on Sundance Channel called Iconoclasts. Iconoclasts. They would team up with Wyclef Jean and one of the Williams sisters. I forget if it's Venus or Serena. Maybe it's Venus. Sorry, I forget. Eddie Vedder with, with pro surfer Laird Hamilton. You know, so they'll put, like, musicians in with athletes and with, uh, I don't know. You know, and they mix up creative people, actors, actresses, chefs, Mario Batali and, and Michael Stipe. And they, they put them in all these situations, and they hang out, and they're friends, and they document all this stuff. But Maya Angelou, you know, a, a thinker, a philosopher, a civil rights activist, and Dave Chappelle, an actor, a comedian, um, Maya Angelou talked about hate. Hate is you're talking about the civil rights movement, and, and Dave Chappelle asked, you know, you, you were there when Martin Luther King was shot and killed. You were there, you know, when Robert Kennedy was killed. You were there when John F. Kennedy was killed. Oh, by the way, I mean, do, was it one person at the top of a, a a book depository? Is is that what happened? It was it was Lee Harvey Oswald, or it was way more complicated than that, and there were dark elements within our government at that time that I don't know came together on an elaborate assassination plot. Could that be the case? 
Or are they conspiracy theorists? Are they crazy for asking the question? Because I've put 11 years between 9-11 and the comments I just made about rehashing all of this stuff. Because it's, it's complicated, and there are a lot of accusations out there, and it's uh, sometimes the more you sift through the data, uh, the more confusing it can be sometimes. I, I don't know. I'd be, be curious to figure out what, what the new polling data would show. How many people believe Roswell was something that the U.S. military lied to us about? <laughs> I don't know. Do we all pretty much understand that something happened there? Or was it a weather balloon? And do people that think it was something different, are those the crazy people? Do you have any different thoughts on 9-11 or, you know, John F. Kennedy? I don't know. <laughs> Leave your comments below. But Dave Chappelle asked Maya Angelou, you, you watched John F. Kennedy get shot in the head and killed. You watched, you know, civil rights leaders, Martin Luther King, get killed. You know, aren't you aren't you angry? It's something along those lines. And, and Maya Angelou told Dave Chappelle, you know, well, yes, it made me angry, David, as she calls him, and 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 goes on to say, but I can't hold on to that anger because that anger is like a cancer. Anger is tangible. Words are tangible. They they attach themselves to things. And if I hold on to that, it's like a cancer. It does nothing to the object I'm angry with, which would be the racism or the power and control grab that led to an assassination of a high official, whether it's a political leader or a... Well, I mean, I guess they're both political leaders, all three of them. Um, but you can't hold on to that anger. It's like a cancer. It, it will devour you. It will destroy you. So, so how am I supposed to feel about Art Modell and LeBron James? What, I'm just supposed to get over it? Like it didn't happen? Or that it's no big deal? Because it was a big deal. Don't tell me that was no big deal. There are important things like life and death that Maya Angelou and Dave Chappelle were discussing. And there are things like sports. They're important in different ways for different reasons. So they're important for different ways and different reasons. But they're both important. And I, I don't know how I was supposed to feel about LeBron James, but I but I watched I watched him win, didn't feel good, and I was able to move past it a little bit more. I'm still not over it, still not happy about it. I'm still not gonna cheer for him. Don't tell me how to feel. But you know, Art Modell passed. And you know the the Lerner family, they're going to sell the, the, the Browns franchise to Jimmy Haslam from Tennessee, a former minority share owner of the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. The Lerners, Al Lerner, convinced Art Modell to sell the team. They signed the deal with Baltimore and, and Art Modell on Al Lerner's private jet. So then Al Lerner gets the new Cleveland Browns franchise expansion team. He purchases it. So now the guy that stole it from us purchases it, purchases that back from us. Thanks a lot. Thanks for nothing. So now we have a situation. We're provided that this sale finally goes through, which it should be clearing very soon now. I, I think there's an upcoming owners meeting where Jimmy Haslam will officially get, get control of the Cleveland Browns franchise. Now the learners will have nothing to do with the Cleveland Browns again. I think I like that. Because if it weren't for those people, maybe the Browns would still be here. Maybe they would have won Super Bowls. And now Art Modell is gone. No more reminder. No more reminder of... Uh, I mean, there's always the reminder, but I mean, it, that person is no longer around. You know, Can we turn the page now? I don't know. I don't know how I, I will feel. I think winning cures a lot. Success cures a lot. And I think this country is, is rooting for an underdog story. I think this country wanted to see LeBron James win a championship for Cleveland because Cleveland has had such a hard time winning. Now, I get that there are sports haters out there, and I get that you're going to talk trash every time 
Cleveland fans speaks up and laugh about how bad we are and how much we choke when when the pressure's on and how stupid our fans are and how dumb the players are. I get it. There are those sports fans that will never break out of that thing. But really, I think there's a time to rub it in and I think there's a time to just step back for a second. You know, I think LeBron James could have been the ultimate underdog story. The kid from Akron playing for the closest local team with the Cleveland Cavaliers and bringing home a championship, and that didn't happen. It really infused a nation when the Saints won that Super Bowl. It was really nice. You know, they'd been through so many heartache, so many heartaches, so much heartbreak. You know, now the difference, obviously, Katrina was life and death, and what the Cleveland franchises have gone through over the past three or four decades, five decades. Um, you know, that, that's just a sports disappointment. I get the difference. He's comparing them to Katrina. Stop it. I understand that they're different. But really, I mean, who doesn't want to root for the underdog? Look, I'm just saying it for selfish reasons, saying I... I'm 33 years old. I've rooted for the Indians, Cavs, and Browns for 33 years times three sports. I'm at 99 years of futility. 99 years and not one championship. Could I, could I see a championship sometime soon? It seems a little ridiculous how close we've gotten. A few times in a few different sports. The Indians and the Cavs and the Browns. Close, no cigar. So, how about this? I said I was going to get to it later. I'm getting to it now. How about this? How about my prediction... My prediction for the upcoming Browns season. What do you think? You've watched preseason. What do you expect out of this cast of characters? Well, I have an idea. I've got a thought. Maybe it's because I can see the Hollywood sign. I can see Alaska. F Wait, no, it's Russia. Sorry. I messed up the Palin quote. I can see Russia from my house. Y you do get the context of that, that if you can see another country realistically physically see it but if it's right there you know southern california understands the mexican drug war that's going on piling up tens of thousands of bodies over drugs that should just be legal and regulated and use those tax dollars to fund teachers unions i'm okay with that but we're a little closer to that international situation i can see russia from my house but i digress <laughs> I really think that it would be a great story. Maybe it's because I can see Hollywood from my house. <laughs> Hopefully for a while, if, if, if these earthquakes, because we're getting a huge cluster of earthquakes. I mean, we've had them for a few weeks. Large amounts of, of clustered earthquakes. Small ones all across Southern California. Just had a big 6.7. What was that? Costa Rica? I got a friend whose family's down there. I guess their house is totally destroyed. I guess I guess the mom's okay and safe and healthy, but but mentally she's uh, really been traumatized, as anyone would be if you lost everything. And we experienced an earthquake. So, I mean, it, it really puts things back into perspective. I root for sports. It's not really important. You know, in the grand scheme of things, it's not important. But really, as a nation looking to find its identity again, after getting kicked in the in the in the in the groin at on September 11th, after getting slapped in the face on public TV by LeBron James, <laughs> getting slapped in the face publicly by Art Modell, after going through a housing crash, yes, some of these are unique to Cleveland sports fans who care about this stuff. But I'm making the metaphor that are really important things like a housing crash or 3,000 dead people. Then there are emotional things for sports teams that don't really matter, but it really kind of kind of twists your soul a little bit. It, it really it puts that dark cloud, that sting, that taint, that, that funk into your life. Sometimes it's hard to shake. Sometimes it's hard to get rid of the anger. And sometimes we carry around a lot of baggage. Baggage from pe things that didn't happen in my lifetime, things that happened uh, with, with some of the genealogical lines going back on different sides with different warring factions and tribes over different territories over thousands of years. I mean, some of that's... I mean, at what point do we just stop that and say, look, we're here now. I just want to win. I just want to do well. And that's really all I want for my Cleveland Browns. I don't want to spend time talking about Art Modell. That is still unpleasant and uncomfortable. I don't want to talk about 9-11. I don't even want to consider the people that are saying that there's more to it than the official story. 
I'm sure you've heard some people say stuff like that. I don't want to consider that, but I have to. As a scientist, I feel like I have to. Wait, did you just call yourself a scientist? Yes, I did. <laughs> you remember that old Bud Light commercial? It's it's my, my friend Justin and I. It's, it's one of our favorite commercials. <laughs> Guy at the airport's wearing the full suit, the, the limousine driver. He has his uh, name on a card. The, this schlub, this Bud Light drinking guy walks up and says, I'm Dr. Galliwikich. The limo driver says, you mean Dr. Galakowitz? Schlub says, yes, I am. <laughs> it's, I don't know. It's it's just really funny. Yes, I am. Are you Dr. Galliwikich? <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta, I gotta find that commercial. I gotta watch it again. It was just one of those, one of those favorite moments. But what, what are we looking for here? What, what are we, what are we trying to find? I, I, I think, you know, I, I don't even want to have those conversations. I don't even want to get into that stuff. But I feel like I have to. Are you a scientist? Yes, I am. Okay, I'm not saying I'm a scientist. Scientist. What I'm saying is, is I think the hypothesis method of traditional science is a pretty decent way to start doing things and I think if you research stuff for 10 or 15 years and you start connecting some dots and you're you're kind of counterbalancing thoughts and opinions and fact and unfact and the known knowns and the unknown knowns and the, the known unknowns or whatever that famous phrase was fool me once <laughs> you ain't gonna fool me again um you know, so I'm not saying I'm a scientist, but I, I'm employing the scientific technique at least a little bit. It did leave its mark on me. And <laughs> as a scientist, I, I just, I, I really think that this country needs a good story. This country needs a little bit of motivation right now. Come on. I, I mean, Bush looked look, like, like an all right guy you'd want to have some beer at a, at a Rangers game with and hang out. I don't know. Sure. He seemed like he might be fun enough from time to time. I think Clinton would be fun to hang out with time to time. Have a cigar. Have a beer. Don't inhale the cigar. So many Clinton jokes. Not going to get into it. Sure. I would talk. I would shoot hoops with Obama. We could talk about stuff. But come on. Come on. This stuff just isn't working. It's it's just not working. The Patriot Act under Bush, the NDAA under Obama, the Federal Reserve under both of them. This stuff just isn't working, guys. It's just not. It's all right. I mean, we got to be able to talk about this stuff. we got to be able to get this stuff out there. But I really think our country needs a story. We need a Rocky Balboa. We need some sort of local hero makes good, something that can become a national story. And I thought that was kind of what that LeBron thing was about. Hey, look, the underdog's making it. If they're making it, we can make it. Come on, gang. If he can do it, we can do it. Let's go. Yay. Right. But, uh, but you see what I'm saying? I, 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 the Rocky Balboa moment, you know, the, the, the celebrity, the not, not celebrity for celebrity's sake, but it's just kind of like, here's a little pride. Here's how we can get this done. Let's just face it. It's not getting done four years into Barack Obama. It's not, it wasn't getting done under Bush. Our whole system, it, it's, it's in trouble. Just step away from the RNC and the DNC for a second. See them as two sides of the same coin. See them as a puppet show, a right hand and a left hand, the right, the left. This one wears a red, red uh, tie. This one wears a blue tie. It's the same puppet show. But there's one brain controlling both hands, controlling both puppets. Think about it. So it's not really working for you when gas is 60 bucks a tank, is it? 200 bucks for groceries? 300 bucks for groceries if you're buying meat and some stuff? When did that happen? Oh, I don't know. But now our money doesn't buy anything. Why is that? Does that punish the people that saved it and tried to do the right thing? Has it made millions of people just give up and say, I can't, I can't compete in this system? Kind of like trying to compete against the Yankees. Did you, did you hear what Cleveland Indians closer Chris Perez was saying? Yeah, that was, that was a good one. Blasting management. 
saying that that Detroit they have a lousy economy they got a small market and look they spent money on their team and they're in first place that's what you need to do and I agree but once again you have an owner of a team instead of a board of directors who collectively own a team collectivism versus capitalism versus cronyism versus fascism oh my the economics are staggering and our money just doesn't go very far anymore the system just isn't working. We need to reconsider our options, folks. But I think, I think that the Cleveland Browns could become that Cinderella story. I think that the Cleveland Browns could become a symbol of a rebuilding country and a resilient people. I think this could be the year. Well, I mean, I, it could be. I didn't guarantee it. But I'm going to tell you about that when I get back on the other side. My name is Brian Engelman. This is a bit of a hybrid show between the unhappy hour, which is the only Cleveland-centric, Los Angeles-based sports show that we're currently aware of. A bit of a hybrid between Strictly Browns, that's where Brandon O'Dell and myself get together to talk Strictly Browns. And then we have overtime and we get into other topics. I, I just can't help it. Because that's what I do when I talk to my friends. I just want to touch on a few other issues. Because I'm more than sports, I'm more than politics, I'm more than music, I'm more than comedy, I'm more than philosophy, I'm more than religion and spirituality. I'm I'm I'm, I'm a blend of all these things. I just I, I I sometimes burn out when I'm talking too much sports or too much politics. And it's also agree to disagree. It's a show where you, it's everything you're not supposed to talk about with people inside of a bar. All those things I just mentioned: finance, spirituality, and religion, politics. I've been a bartender for a while, Brian the Bartender. <laughs> Went by that name for a while. Not because it was cool, because it had alliterative qualities. The BB, Brian the Bartender. That way your clients, your customers could learn who you were. They could call you by name. They have an as association with you. They're more likely to think you're all right. And when you're working off tips, you'd rather have that than someone who doesn't care, someone who doesn't know, someone that doesn't think about that. Yeah, so I, I tried to connect with people. But I've been Brian the bartender for a while, and you're not supposed to t talk about that stuff inside of a bar. But I always did. <laughs> I had a guest give me Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand after several of our conversations. He said, you'll like this. It sat in my, in, in my possession for over a decade until I had a shoulder surgery, and I had a month or two to just kind of spend a little bit more time slowing down. And I read the book. I thought there were many good points in there. So we do a lot of stuff here at the New American Media, and that's why we ask that you continue following us. If you're listening to this after the fact, please do us a favor and click subscribe and tell your friends and leave some comments. Go back through our other videos and interviews. Leave some comments there. We'd appreciate that. Follow us on Twitter. We're at American underscore media underscore. That's American underscore media underscore. And go to Facebook and search for The New American Media and connect with us there. So when I get back, I'm going to make my pitch. You know, I'm going to make my elevator pitch. I'm going to make this pitch to see why I think the Cleveland Browns should be the comeback kid, the Cinderella story, the team to root for this year. And I'll give you my predictions of, of how I would write this story. Coming up on the other side, on the Unhappy Hour, here on the NewAmericanMedia.com. You are listening to The Unhappy Hour Sports Radio Show on the NewAmericanMedia.com. Follow the NewAmericanMedia.com on Twitter at American underscore media underscore. This is the New American Media. Agree to disagree. Yeah, it's a radio show we have on thenewamericanmedia.com every single Friday at 4.30 p.m. Pacific. Join the show. What do we talk about? Politics, religion, and spirituality. Basically anything you're not supposed to talk about in a bar. <laughs> you're not supposed to have these conversations inside of a bar, but we have them every single Friday at 4.30 p.m. Pacific on thenewamericanmedia.com. Join the show, offer your opinion, and let's agree to disagree, but let's have a good conversation. Have you ever considered adopting a pet to be part of your family? Our animal companions can be just as close to us as our human companions. If you're considering adoption, please visit your local shelter and adopt a pet today. Shelter pets make the best pets. 
Hi, Brian from TheNewAmericanMedia.com. Last year I had this idea. I wanted to start a website of my own. Not just something, a presence on Twitter, a presence on Facebook, and have a thing. I wanted a website. I wanted a home base for all of the ideas and things I'm interested in. I wanted live radio. I wanted to communicate with the globe. I was tired of being spoon-fed dogma by corporate interests and, and just, here, believe this, believe this. I said, no, I, I think there's something underneath the surface, but I didn't know how to do it. So I contacted Ted Distel of distaldesign.com. Ted walked us through the process of, okay, you want videos, you want to do quotes of the day, you want to have a spiritual section, you want to have a 1984 watch where, where government's intru intruding and private corporations are intruding into your privacy. Yeah. Yeah, those are the things that I was interested in. Ted walked me through the process. We built thenewamericanmedia.com, and I encourage you to go online and take a look at our site. That's what he's capable of. Please, if you have an idea, go to distaldesign.com. That's D-I-S-T-E-L design.com. T-N-A-M radio, because the news always matters. Hi, Brian from thenewamericanmedia.com. You know, this housing crisis that we've been in for a few years now has really taken a toll on a lot of families. I know somebody you've worked with, somebody that's, that you're related to, maybe even yourself. You might have gone through some sort of foreclosure, short sale, deed in lieu of foreclosure, or any other nonsense going on in the financial markets tied to housing. One of the things that is not talked about enough is the fact that a lot of people have to get rid of their homes right now and go into some sort of apartment-style living. And in that situation, many people can't bring their cat or dog, their friend, their companion, a member of their family. Imagine your dog, imagine your cat, dropped off at a shelter. Oh, it's a shelter. They'll be safe. No, the shelters just don't have the resources capable to take care of these animals, and thousands of them are put to death every single week. Please, if you have the opportunity, go become a foster parent at, at a shelter. Go to your local shelter, adopt a dog or cat. Trust me, a family out there is going to really appreciate the effort. If you're tired of the other stuff, take a look at thenewamericanmedia.com. Be sure that you go on to facebook.com. And do a quick search for The New American Media and like our page, because we like it when you do that. It's Friday, and you know what that means. It's time for The Unhappy Hour Live Sports Radio Show on TheNewAmericanMedia.com. Here is your host, Brian Engelman. 